All right, dude, we are live. What's up, guys? This is Dem Keys, and today I am super excited because let me just adjust my mic because I finally got body tracking set up. Um, I had been working for the past couple of days. I'd been working on uh, um, setting up the body pose tracking system on another machine because I have the webcam connected to another machine and I wanted to kind of offload all of the ML calculations onto another machine instead of having to do them on my main streaming machine. So uh, I spent some time working on that and after I managed to set up, after I managed to capture all the um body pose landmarks because like that's that's how that's your body tracking data essentially uh wh what happens is you capture a webcam frame and then you pass that into an ml model that's gonna actually there's i think there's two ml models basically you then tell media pipe you give it to media pipe and tell media pipe to detect a body pose in it and uh, media pipe will then return body pose landmarks landmarks are basically uh, locations representing various body points, body body landmarks, I guess that's the best way to... Oh, I can show you what exactly a landmark is over here. Give me a second. So we have this here. Let's go to solutions. Um, let's go to body pose. Where is body pose? Also, I should look at hand landmark at some point. Yeah, I think I should look at hand landmark as well uh, to track hand related uh, landmarks. Because now that I have body pose set up, I can then set up land uh, hand tracking. as well. the, the thing is, the more I do the more tracking I do, the the heavier it's going to become on the system. So I need to be careful of how much I'm doing. I mean, it's not like the system is super slow or anything. Uh, this system as not the system on which I'm doing the work. It's not like that system is like super slow, but um, it's it's got its limitations, definitely. And I cannot offload with that specific system i cannot offer the calculations onto the gpu with this system with my streaming system i would have at least had that chance to do that but with the um with the other system i just don't have that option uh so i'm stuck with the cpu but even with the cpu i'm still able to do quite a bit uh and i want to i want to see how far i can push it okay we can look into I mean the hand landmark thing. I don't think it's going to be all that different, right? Let's let's just take a look at the examples real quick. Um, code example. Actually, maybe I should have looked at the guide instead of because like this is going to take me to the collab page. And I want to look at. Oh wait, does it also mention the? Yeah, okay. So there's the hand landmarks that I'm going to be capturing. Oh, this can be useful. Okay, so yesterday I was wondering how, because like I wanted to set up, um, I wanted to set up, uh, I wanted to try and use hand tracking to control my mouse on my screen. Uh, I'll I'll work on that. I'll work on that soon. But yeah, uh, at some point when I do set up hand tracking, or more specifically finger tracking, to to track my uh to track the positions of like specific points on the hand then i can apply that to uh, i can apply at least one of those to i can use at least one of those to uh to control my mouse cursor position and then uh eventually i can see how to how to simulate a button click cuz i think from the Win32 point of view, a button click, like you send input into into a window, like into a specific window. Um, 
I need to see if I'm able to do like a global input kind of thing. Or if, if I'm able to make one window send input into another window. Like when, when both the windows are not related to each other at all. Um, once I'm able to do that, I'll be able to simulate um, left mouse, right mouse. Well, left mouse button, right mouse button. Uh, I'll, there's probably also going to be something to simulate the mouse wheel. Um, but yeah, dude, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. I can I can, dude, that'll be a fun experiment to do. For sure, for sure, that'll be a fun experiment to do, and I can do that. I can do that on stream as well, especially now that I have this uh, tracking thing set up. Okay, so I wanna I wanna show you guys. Wait, hold on. So let's go down to body. Where's where's body here? So we'll go to code examples and I think I have to open up the guide or is it down here I think it's down here so these are wait here so these are the uh, landmarks you have a couple for the head uh, then you have for, for shoulders you have uh, for the elbow for the wrists uh, then you have two for for the palm so you can say three for the palm uh, for each palm and then there's one for the thumb uh, then you have for the hips for the knees, for the ankles, and then for the feet. So you have a couple... Wait. Yeah, okay. So you have a couple of landmarks here. Um, right now, I'm only using uh, one from the head and uh, two for the shoulders and then two for elbows and two for the wrists. Just I'm, I'm keeping it simple for now. Um, I have tested out with adding two more of these because like it's anyways capturing all of those. I need to see if I'm able to customize it to where I'm able to capture only the specific landmarks that I wanted to capture. So that way, maybe I can reduce the load. Maybe I can like improve the performance if I'm only if I'm only capturing specific landmarks. Because right now it's capturing all of the landmarks, and then I only use like I don't know. How many, how many are those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm, I'm only using about seven landmarks and it captures 33 landmarks. Not only that, it, it gives you 33 landmarks in uh, image space, 33 landmarks in world space, and then there's something else uh, for segment something. I don't remember what that was. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's doing a bunch of work. I need to see if I can manage to customize it to where it only captures specific landmarks that I wanted to capture. And I need to see if that can improve performance. Because if it can, then like, you know, why not? I can then use use that extra performance that I get um, for running some other ML model, for running some other uh, media pipe task. Now, okay, I'm excited. I want to show you guys. Here's the thing though. I realized right before I started the stream that um, there's a mic in front of me like that that's going to affect the tracking so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch to desktop capture and i'm going to move my mic away from me so it's not occluding the webcam because i have a webcam capturing me and um that way you guys can see the uh that way you guys can see the that way well i mean you guys will be able to see it anyways but in that way my tracking is not going to get messed up that easily so give me a second while I set this up. Okay. All right. Now. I'm gonna switch to desktop capture and then I'm not gonna talk because my mic is gonna be away from actually I can still talk I can still talk that's not an issue it's just that it's not gonna be as audible because the mic is far away from me give me a second let me hydrate because otherwise I'm gonna start having issues talking Okay, so 
Um, I'm going to turn on my desktop capture. Okay. And I think I should move my VTuber avatar down to the side. Down to the corner, rather. Uh, is this good? I think this is good. Yeah. Great. Cool. Awesome. So, we are in desktop capture now. And uh, all I need to do is run the thing. Uh, I'm going to move my mic away from me just so the tracking doesn't get messed up. And then I'll... So, basically, I won't be talking a whole lot during that time. And then I'll bring the mic back close to me. I just realized that I forgot to change the scene. I forgot to transition. Alright, so I've brought my mic back in front of me and if you start to notice the, the landmarks kind of freaking out, it's because of that. Like it's kind of losing tracking a little bit uh, wherever the mic is occluding. So fortunately right now it is able to track my head and my shoulders and my elbows. But like if you start to notice the thing misbehaving at some point, then that's probably the reason. Um, also at, at points where I move away from the camera and Let's say I move one of my hands away. You can see one of the things, you can see two of them freaking out right now. It's because I moved my left wrist off of the camera's uh, screen. So the camera is not able to see it. And so it kind of starts to freak out a little bit. So I need to, I need to work on a couple of things here. I need to work on smoothing mechanism because you guys can probably notice that it's very jittery. There's, uh, there's a lot of like shaking going on. And I have an idea for uh, something I want to implement to to smooth out the the values. You, you see, okay, this is a good example. So I'm scratching my my right shoulder with my left hand right now, and um, all of that is well, most of that is being it's it's being occluded by the mic, so the webcam is not able to see me properly. And then you notice the things start to just freak out. So I need to um, I need to look into various. Ways. Oh, you know what I could do? This is a this is a good uh, test case. Uh, I have been visualizing these things because, uh, like, each landmark gives you a couple of things. Each landmark gives you um, the X, Y, and Z positions, but it also gives you visibility and presence. So I need to I need to see what I'm able to do with those values because like for example if something is not present a whole lot then maybe it, i can find a way to like not show it um okay um just ignore ignore how slow the tracking is going it's because i'm i'm trying to write text on there so it's going to be pretty damn slow but this would be a good time to okay so i'm gonna touch my right shoulder with my left hand uh i don't know which one. okay so the one that's freaking out is the one okay so the presence is kind of, it's fluctuating quite a bit right um let's Let's also visualize the visibility. Uh, that's going to be even more slower, but like, let's just. Okay. 
I'm trying to look at values here, dude. Holy shit, I cannot see anything. Give me a second. So let's get rid of presence and just show visibility. Right, so I'm gonna bring my hand here. Okay, so visibility is like greatly impacted, right? I saw I saw it at 0.7 at some. Oh, okay. So visibility it does show that the thing is not well visible. So what I could do is, and you can also see that with my right hand, it's like 0.2. My left hand is uh, 0.6, and it's kind of fluctuating. And if I move it like way off screen, then you have like it's 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 way lower. So what I could do is. Actually, okay, so the model does allow you to uh, specify minimum visibility and minimum uh, presence. I don't remember exactly what, what it was. Hold on. Wait, this is going to show the entire window, isn't it? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Whatever. So we have a couple of things here. We have, wait, maximum number of poses that can be detected by, I need to look into, I need to look into this. Like what exactly does this do? I haven't, I haven't touched this value so far. Um, but yeah, okay. So mi pose detect, minimum pose detection uh, confidence, minimum pose presence confidence, and minimum tracking confidence. So I can play around with these values to maybe have it not capture certain uh, certain points. So then it just won't give those values to begin with. Actually, no, if that happens, actually, this would be a good, um, this would be a good, what do you call it? Uh, this would be a good experiment because like the way that i'm doing it right now on the other machine is all of the landmarks get captured right but after all the landmarks are captured hold on let me switch back to the old thing so after all the landmarks are captured i select only a few of the landmarks so basically i filter out the landmarks i only select a, a few of them store them in an array and then i iterate over that array um oh man voice crack my voice is just not having it today hold on give me a second let me hydrate again <clears throat> it's also kind of weird for me um the lighting that i've had to set up because I usually have only one light on uh, in in the room when I'm when I'm streaming, um, or I mean, if I if I want to be in the dark, then I switch off the light. But, but for the sake of tracking, I had to I, I would have to have the light on, right? In this case, I have to have two lights on. Um, fortunately, my room has like multiple lights. Uh, I have like the the tube the tube light, which it only has out of two uh, out of two of the tube tubes only one is working. I still haven't replaced the other one, so there's some light coming from that. And then I have these orange lights. These are really old and they're just there for emergency when when the the tube light stops working. Uh, then at least I have some light, right? So I have, and then then I have another uh, light fixture in which both of the light bulbs are just gone and I never, well, I mean, they kind of fused and then I never uh, replaced them. So I can't, I can't really use that. But fortunately, I do have some, I have, I have a bunch of working lights. So I, I was able to switch on both, both of these lights. Something I don't like is that one of them is orange or yellow, let's say, and the other one is, uh, is white. I prefer the white one. The, the tube light is white. And I prefer that, but like, uh, for the sake of improving tracking, I had to switch on both the lights because it seems to track a lot better when there's more lighting. Uh, another thing I could do is I could just, uh, I have, I have a couple of other box lights that I had made a long time back, um, with like LED strips and stuff like that. I could, 
possibly use that and just have extra lighting set up. That could, that could work for sure. Uh, I could make a light stick for myself. I could do that. Yeah, I could make a light stick. Uh, I have LED strips. I can cut... Oh man, that, that's going to be a whole lot of like soldering and all. And I don't want to get into that right now. Because like there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. It's simple stuff, but like I'll still have to do the work, right? Like I'll have to strip the wires, um, cut the LED strips, glue the LED strips onto something. And then of course there's a, the, the soldering. Maybe I have to solder the the wires to the led strips before i stick the led strips onto the stick there's a there's a bunch of things i have to look into um it's much easier to just get a light because like the light is not l lights lights are not that expensive i can get like cheap cheap quality ones they'll work for however long they work and after that i'll get new ones either way okay so lighting lighting is not too much of an issue but, okay, so this has been a good learning experience for me. I've learned, first of all, what goes into body tracking, like at least, at least basic, basic stuff of what goes into body tracking. And I, I'm also beginning to see the challenges that people, people can face with body tracking related stuff. Uh, body tracking, face tracking, anything tracking, anything that's, that's tracking any part of your body. Um, I'm, I'm starting to see um, the, the challenges that people can face because with, with my setup, a very good example with my setup, like just now I had to move the mic, right? Just so it's not occluding the, it's not occluding me from the camera. How do I, how do I even say that? Just so my body is not being occluded by the mic. So, so the camera can, can see me properly, right? Because if my body is being occluded or if some parts of the body are being occluded, then they won't be tracked properly. And when they're, when they're not tracked properly, then the landmarks, they just kind of freak out. Um, you know what I could do? Okay, hold on. We could test this out right now. Um, but I'm going to have to test it out because because I'll be testing it out on a different system. Um, I don't know. Hold on. I need to see. I need to see what this tracks. Okay, so I'm going to close this. I have, I have, I'm working on a different system right now. So just, I, I guess I'll just talk about it. Uh, we have... Oh, by the way, I didn't. I also forgot to mention uh, this. I, I man, I finally managed to set up the the socket socket programming thing as well, um, like for for communicating between multiple uh, between two two machines and between multiple apps. So that is how I was able to get the landmark information, uh, the the body tracking data. That is how I was able to uh, set it up because it's being it's being tracked on one machine and then i'm sending it over to this machine okay so uh minimum pose detection confidence right so i want to see what happens if i okay okay this would be a good a good example. I need to see how many poses it's tracking. So here's what we're gonna do. Wait, what what do what do these values mean? Hold on. Um, the minimum confidence score for the pose detection to be considered successful. The minimum confidence score for the pose detection to be considered successful. Okay. Minimum pose presence confidence. The minimum confidence score of pose pres... The minimum confidence score of pose presence... Pre presence score in the pose landmark detection. 
yeah, I still, I've read this multiple times previously and I'm still kind of confused about what exactly this means. The minimum confidence score of Poe's presence score. So this is a score of a score. Okay, uh, next, minimum tracking confidence. The minimum confidence score for Poe's tracking to be considered successful. Okay, all right. Um, I think for now I need to mess around with minimum tracking confidence. Let's let's play around with that. Let's set it to 0 0.7 for now. Okay, and then I, I kind of want to see what gets tracked. Okay, so we have it here. And then I bring my hand down, bring the other hand down. Is it still tracking? I need to see that. That's what I need to find out. Okay, uh, I need to print out. I have filtered landmarks, right? Okay, let's do it on the callback. Okay, so if result is none and if uh, pose landmarks is not zero, then let's print out the length of pose landmarks. So let me see the value that shows up now. It says one. Oh, oh, wait, it's a list of, it's a list of lists. Okay. So let's uh, do that instead. Man, I wish I would have streamed yesterday. Oh, okay, so it's still tracking 33. Oh, man. Okay, I, something happened here. Hold on. Something went wrong because it's not tracking properly. Actually, let's try changing pose presence instead. Okay, so I set pose presence to Well, okay, it seems to be it seems to be tracking It seems to be tracking 33 no matter what, which is good. So that way, if I'm selecting if I'm trying to select specific landmarks, I don't need to I don't need to worry about the index of of the landmark like where in the array is it going to be uh, because it's always going to be the same great okay now i need to play around with this unfortunately i haven't figured out a, a decent way to uh oh wait a second we have the the thing here I could just do this, right? Why why was I doing it the other way? Cuz I have to I have to like scroll so much just for that. So instead um what was it? Min pose detection. Oh, uh just like if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm I'm playing around with these values. I'm messing around with them to see how I can affect my uh my tracking actually i could show it i could show it yeah i can i can have the the 
program running because like I this the script that I'm running here, it basically starts a server. It it binds the socket to an endpoint and after that it just listens for data. It just well it's not even listening. I mean, yeah, no, it's kinda listening. But like not really not really listening. It's just trying to receive data. If some data comes in, okay. If data doesn't come in, then it's not gonna do anything. So yeah, I can I can show it over here. Okay, so right now it's a black window because the script is not running on the other system. I will set up everything and then Okay. Uh, min tracking. All right, so it's receiving data, and there it is. Uh, it's it's gonna look a little bit jam. Oh wait, I haven't. I keep forgetting to do the fucking transition, dude. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so it's tracking. It started out a little bit. It started out a little jank, and um, yeah, if you see the thing frozen right now, it's because I closed the other application. So it's just holding on to the previous data that was there. Okay, uh, what was I gonna do? Was I gonna close this? No, I don't. I don't think I was. I forgot what I was going to do. So, okay. Anyways. Oh, oh, yeah. What I was going to do is... Oh, you know what I could do? Let's take the hand off to the side. Okay, there's an ad playing, so... You know what? I'll hydrate right now. Also, let's see what the body tracking looks like when I hydrate. Alright, welcome back. Dude, it is kind of weird seeing myself being tracked like this. I'm just... I'm just not used to this. Like, holy shit, dude. Okay, should I get rid of the text here? Because I feel like the text is really slowing things down. Okay. Alright. So I kind of want to see what the tracking looks like. Um, okay, so I want to set a minimum presence. The minimum presence that I want. Man, I need to understand these fucking values properly, dude. Holy shit. I don't understand what these values are. The minimum confidence score for pose detection to be considered successful. The minimum confidence score for pose detection to be considered successful. All right, let's try changing this value. Okay, I'm going to change it in the other. I'm going to change it on the other end. So minimum pose detection, it's set to 0 0.5. What what happens if I set it to 0 0.8? It, it has to be a minimum of 0 0.8 to be considered successful. Because if I take it lower, it also starts tracking like... It, 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 basic, it, it becomes a little more jank because it starts tracking... Um, it starts tracking even in situations where the tracking isn't that stable. Alright, so I set it to zero point. Okay, so I set it I set it to zero point eight and it is just not tracking now. Okay. 
let's set it to 0 0.6. Okay, so I had to I had to kind of jump start it a little bit because it, it wouldn't start in the beginning. Okay, uh I'm looking at visibility, not presence. I just realized that. Hold on. Uh let's disable or comment this out and then show this instead. I like how fast it starts, dude. Like, like how, how quickly it starts. Like, I'm surprised by that. Okay, so presence. The presence is like fairly... Okay, dude, I need to Google how these things are supposed to work, how these parameters are supposed to work. Uh, media pipe. Let me just look that up. Media pipe. Um, min detection confidence. Min tracking confidence. Oh, let's let's uh, real quick. Let's change the tracking confidence and see what happens. Oh shit! It's still running. Hold on. Let me close that. Reopen it. Okay. Wow, for some reason it's a lot faster now. I'm not sure what's going on there. Or maybe I'm just feeling that way. Okay, so my my left and right wrists are down. So you cannot see them on screen, but like they keep trying to pop up on screen. And you can kind of see them, you can you can see their text, definitely. Like the left wrist, you can see its text, like, bouncing up and down. It's like 0 0.02, 0 0.01 presence. So here's what I'm thinking, right? Okay, even the... Wait a second. What am I looking at? Yeah, okay. So even the... Uh, by the way, just so it's not confusing, um, I have I have sort of an offset setup. Uh, initially, I was supposed to display X and Y and then visibility and then presence. So I kind of set them at like offsets. And that's why presence is so high up here. This presence is for this landmark. And this presence is for this landmark here. So this presence is for a landmark that's much lower. And then even this presence is for a landmark that's much lower. That's why you're seeing like such low numbers. Now, what I need to do is, if it is not tracking or if the presence, I can I can check if the presence is very low, I could do something there. I could like maybe freeze it in place or what can I do? Oh, shit. I closed. I closed the wrong program. Okay. Um, what can I do? So we are tracking this thing here. Right? We have landmark position. We are iterating over all the landmarks. What can I do? do well okay so i'm i'm visualizing the landmarks here right if i'm visualizing the landmarks how would i use the previous landmarks value well okay this hasn't been uh, am I working on the global landmark list? Yeah, okay, I am. Okay, something something I could do is I could I could store it in like a previous frame. Um, I mean, I could store, I could set up 
a list that would store values from the previous frame. So basically at the end of each frame, I, I store the value of the current uh, list in that variable. And then in the next frame, I'll still have access to that previous frame variable because I'm working on the, so like um, I have a landmarks list here, just as an example, I have a landmarks list here, right? I could set up previous 01 landmarks or I could say previous landmarks 01 right and at the end wait what's going on here yeah it's not defined I'm, I'm defining it uh should I give it a second what it okay yeah we're, we're good now Okay, great. So at the end of the while loop, I believe, I should set... Where is this? Okay. Right. If everything is done... Then I can set previous landmarks 01 to landmark position, no, landmarks. Right. So what I can do here then is, this might crash if I try to access, okay, yeah, no, I can, I can, I can test the thing. So for each landmark, uh, if I presence is less than, oh, you know what? Uh, wait, I would be setting, if I did a ternary operator, then it would be our ternary condition or a conditional expression, um, it would be setting at each, yeah, no, okay, let's let's just do a regular thing. So if I uh, presence is less than 0 0.3, I don't know, I guess, let's say less than 0 0.3, uh, then we set I, hold on, if I, if we are iterating over, wait, should I, maybe I shouldn't be, yeah, okay, let's create a temp variable. And uh, then I can use Okay, hold on. Then i dot x? No. Then i equals, yeah, let's do i equals uh, previous landmarks. Oh, I don't have an index. Shit, I don't have an index. I just realized that. There is a way to get an index. I forgot what that was. Let me just Google that real quick. Um, there is a way to get an index. Let me disable display capture. Because I don't trust Avast to not throw up something silly. Okay. Uh, which keyboard am I on? Here. Okay. So let's... Uh, what was I gonna... Oh, yeah. Python for index. There was a way, there was a way to do it. Uh, they had like an, an what was it? An, an uh, enumeration or an, like there was some kind of function that you would have to use and that would return, I think a tuple. And then you could, you could use like the index and the value and stuff like that. Okay. Um, Enumerate. It's called enumerate. Okay. And that 
Man, what is up with my voice? Give me, give me a second. Let me hydrate. <clears throat> Okay, so they are also mentioning it is non-Pythonic to manually index via for uh, i in range len so-and-so x equals so-and-so or manually manage an additional state variable. Okay. Uh, exploitation of features of the Python language to produce code that is clear, concise, and maintainable. Pythonic means code that doesn't just get the syntax right, but that follows the conventions of the Python community and uses the language in a way that is in a way it is intended to be used, in the way it is intended to be used. This is maybe easiest to explain by negative example. Okay, uh, this is maybe easiest to explain uh, by negative example. Oh, another thing I wanted to look into, because I have looked into this previously, but I haven't, like, I, I don't do it nearly as often, so I don't, I forget. Like, I have looked into it previously, like, it, basically changing the value of an item that's from a list that you are currently iterating over. So if I'm currently iterating over a list, can I change the value of the item that is currently being iterated over? Or yeah, the 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 item that is in the current iteration. Okay. Uh Python change value during iteration. Change list value while iterating. Okay, that's a good example. How to modify list entries. Modifying each element while iterating a list is fine, as long as you do not change uh, or add or remove elements to the list. That makes sense. Okay, I think that's what I had looked up previously. Like, what happens if I add more items to the list and I'm currently iterating over that list like what would happen would we get an error or would it be like undefined behavior or something anyways okay let's let's get back to uh, the enumerate thing so I know that landmarks is going to be the same length as previous landmarks right so in that case what I could do is let's just make a duplicate of this Okay, uh, enumerate. And what does this return? This returns a tuple, doesn't it? Yeah, it returns a tuple. Um, we have, let's do n and i. So n is the index, n is the number. Hold on. Um, returns an enumerate object it re returns an enumerate object iterable must be a sequence an iterator or some other object which supports iteration it returns a tuple containing a count and the values obtained from iterating over iterable okay all right so i think i think that's i think that's it yeah that's good uh, so then I can do this. Right, so I'm changing the current value. I wonder if i is a copy or a direct. I think I should I should try that out here. Let's create... Okay, I don't need any of this. Oh, by the way, in, in the previous uh, stream where I was... where I suddenly started having problems with, like, receiving data, I found out that the issue was the fact that I was using wait key zero. 
So it was waiting indefinitely. I still have to explore this more to properly understand what was going on. But something that I didn't try out on stream, and I also didn't try it out until the next day, I actually didn't stream the next day because I was trying to solve this issue. Um, but yeah, was something that I didn't notice was that I would be sending the data from one machine, it would be receiving it, but it wasn't printing it. It would print when I would hit any other key on my keyboard, then it would start printing the message. So that's how I knew that, okay, this is what's causing the issue. I still need to look more into wait key to understand exactly how it works when you are using it within a while loop. But yeah, um, that's what the issue was. And that's how I solved the problem. And I was able to, you know, move forward with whatever I was trying to do. Okay, so let's say um, sum list 01 equals 1, 2, 3. Okay, now for i in sum list, i plus equals 1. And then we print out sum list. Okay, so it's not doing that, right? Uh, now let's modify this a little bit. Let's do enumerate. And then we get the index. And then we do some list. This should change it. This should definitely change it. Yeah, there you go. That changes it. So if I do it like this, then it'll change it. But if I just use I, it doesn't change it. So that means I is a copy. I is not uh, a reference. Yeah, okay. I is a copy. Uh, going back to this. So if, where was I? Yeah, if presence is lower than 0 0.3, then we use the previously stored presence. So what I'm hoping for here is Okay, hold on. I think I think there might be a way that this could go wrong because the the very first time it happens, like the very first time it runs the iteration, uh, previous landmarks is going to be zero. Landmarks is also going to be zero, right? Well, no, okay, it's receiving. It's receiving the data. So the first time it receives the data, it may not necessarily be... Actually, no, that's not completely... Yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm going to need to set some kind of switch for when it first starts tracking like when it when it first successfully tracks because if the very first tracking that it does the very first tracking data that is received contains presence less than 0 0.3 um it's just never going to be proper then like it's it's always going to be broken Okay, so let me turn on display capture. Let's go back here. Oh shit. I did that whole thing and then I forgot. I forgot to transition. So this whole time I've been in display capture. Great, awesome. Okay, so let's run this. Oh, am I not running the other thing? Yeah, I think there's the issue. Wait, what is going on? All right, the window kind of froze. Something wrong here? Oh, yeah, 
So the very first tracking, yep, it tried to it tried to pull the data. Okay. All right. So there is our issue. Uh What was it? And previous landmarks no. Len no. And not len previous landmarks equals zero. Then wait, did it crash again? Okay, run it again. All right, there it is. Now, what happens if I bring the hand down? What did I set this condition to? If it is less than zero. No, less than 0 0.3. Okay. Now, I need to find, man, holy shit, this lighting is really messing with, it's really messing, messing with me, because like, the, I don't like too much lighting, but like, both of these lights mixed together is creating like a weird kind of color, because it's, it's like orange light and white light mixed together. I need to find, <laughs> I need to get another white light. So I can just have that. Maybe I could just get a ring light. That would that would be much better. That would accomplish what I'm trying to do. It would still be bright, but at least I would be getting proper tracking and stuff like that. Ring lights, fortunately, ring lights are pretty cheap these days. So I can probably go and get myself one. So if presence is okay. Let's see what happens if I, let's let's run this again. Now let's bring this down here. Now presence is clearly less than 0. Point that. But it's is it setting the value to the previous variable or to the previous list or not? I need to find a way to like freeze the value somewhere. Okay. Here's what I can try. Okay, uh, let's make it so I, wait a second. Okay, yeah, let's make it so I X equals 0 0.1. Uh, let's do the same for I, Y. So if it is not tracking properly, if the presence, let's say if the presence is less than 0 0.3, the landmark should go in the top, uh, top left. It should be displayed in the top left. Let's just, or the top right, I guess. Oh, that's happening with the others as well. Okay, okay, I just realized that it's not applying to just the the wrists, it's applying to everything else. Okay, all right, that's fine. So when the presence goes too low, that happens. Okay, here's what we can do. We can change that threshold. 0.5 so then even the shoulders or even the elbows not the shoulders even the elbows go there right and if they come into the camera's view now we can see them that works well i mean that doesn't i mean the, the logic works that's not a very good it's not a very good solution here but the logic works oh 
Uh, here's something fun we can try out real quick. Uh, maybe I should make this size dynamic. Um, what is it? Where where was it? Okay, let's create buff size equals. Let's make it uh, accept what initially we were doing 1KB, so 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192. Let's do 8192. And let's just send all the landmarks. Actually, is that is that going to be 8192? I don't know. Hold on. Let me see how, how big that's going to be. Let me run this again. Okay. Um, filtered landmarks equals this. All right. And in the send method, I want... Wait, before it sends, it does this, right? Okay. So I want to get the length. Actually, no, I want to get the length. Yeah, I want to get the length of the bytes-like object, which is going to be a bytes array. I want to get the length of that. Give it a second while it does its thing. Oh, shit. There's a problem. A string without an encoding. Oh, okay. So let's give an encoding. ASCII. All right. Yeah, that doesn't... No, that doesn't work. Wait, what's going on? Result.pose.landmark. Oh, just a second. Let me go back up here and change this as well. Okay. Now. Uh, data string. Okay, okay. Why is this only showing two? It is definitely not two. Uh, result pose landmarks. If not len, result pose landmarks equals zero. Oh, wait a second. Let's try to make it track. Oh, it's it's when I make it track. It's when I make it track. Alright, so it's 40 something something. Wait a second. So it, doesn't that mean my logic is a tiny bit flawed here? Shouldn't I have been checking for... Well, so if result is not equal to none, if if the result object is not it's it's not null, then maybe I should be checking for the length of the list inside the pose landmarks list. Okay, it crashed. It's out of Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, that was the reason. Okay. Pose landmarks zero. Yeah, okay, it's tracking, fine. Okay, whatever, it's tracking everything. What, what data was it reading previously? If I'm setting pose landmark, 
should I run a for loop and do this that way instead? For i in result dot pose underscore landmarks. Oh, pose landmarks zero. Uh, filtered landmarks dot append. Oh, dot append i. That should be enough. Okay, is that going to do it? Okay, that still doesn't do it, but like... All right, that's fine. It's okay. It's, it's kind of slow to... Uh, visualize it but like you guys at least you guys will get to see what it looks like so let me set the buffer size actually i have to set the buffer size here okay so i set the buffer size to 8192 and then here i can do buffer size it's going to receive all that data and then it's going to do its thing okay great for the time being let's get rid of this logic here okay And let's run this. Oh, no. Hold on. Hold on. Stop. Is the presence still being shown? Yeah, let's not show the presence. And let's run this. And... Okay. It is not. Oh, that's why it's not doing it. I thought I selected the right thing, but apparently not. Oh my god, dude. Okay, there it is. Finally. Finally we got... So you can see... You can see my head. You can see my hands. The elbows. I can bring my hands down. So this is... These are all of the landmarks. There's, there's more. There's for the hips and the knees and the ankles and feet and stuff. But like, I can't... I, I'm mainly capturing like above the waist right now. If I wanted to capture all the other stuff, I would have to. You know what? I can try. I can try it. Let me hold on. Okay, now that's more trouble than it's worth. Uh, because, well, I don't have a proper place where I can make the camera capture all of my body landmarks. So like, it's gonna... But it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting having to capture all of these and visualize them. Let me move this mic. Yeah. So, okay. Something I'm confused by is I wasn't having this issue previously. So what I was doing in what I'm doing in the other system, like you guys cannot see it, but what I was doing in the other system was um Oh, 
Okay, so what I was doing in the other system was um, I was checking if results results is the object that's returned after uh, after a detection operation, like after you run detect, that's the result that gets returned. And in that result object, you have a couple of other uh, attributes that you can then use. One of them is uh, one of them is the pose landmarks attribute, which is a list containing another list. That other list uh, contains all of the actual landmarks. So what I was doing was I was checking if pose dot if if pose landmarks, as in the parent list, if its length was zero. If its length was zero. If its length was zero, then no. If its length was not zero, then I would read all of the. Uh, I would read whichever landmarks I wanted from the child list. So I'm checking the length of the parent li list. So like if the parent list length is one at least, that means I'm gonna have this this child list here and like within this list, which is a child of that parent list, um, I'll have all of the landmarks, right? Give me a second, let me hydrate. Okay, so something that surprised me was that when I Previously, I was like picking and choosing specific landmarks to read from, but when I decided to assign the entire list as it is, then it was behaving kind of weird. It wasn't exactly giving me giving me what I was, what I wanted from it. Okay, let's run this again. Uh. So right now you can see there's there's tracking jank going on. I need to get the thing started um, by Okay, there you go. So this is this is the body tracking with like all of the landmarks. The funny thing is what it what it's tra Oh. Oh shit. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, okay. That's right. That's right. Okay, so here's where my confusion was, right? My confusion was because I was trying to read the length of the string cuz like um, the pose landmarks list, or at least the filtered landmarks list, I was, um, I was serializing that into JSON data, which would then be a string representing that JSON data. And then I would, uh, I would convert that to a bytes like object with ASCII encoding. And then we would get like a byte array, right? And I was reading, I was reading the length of that string, the, the the JSON string, that is. And something that I didn't take into account was uh, it would still be an empty list. Was it the JSON string? Yeah, yeah. Something I didn't take into account was that I would still be getting an empty list, which if you're serializing a, a string, let's, let's just confirm that over here. Okay. Uh, so I have JSON already, you know, imported up there, so I can directly do this here. So sum str01 or no, sum list01 equals empty, and then sum underscore str01 equals JSON dot dump s sum list01. Um, that's a list, right? Does the list have to be a bytes like? I think it has to be a bytes like object. 
Okay. So when you do this, uh, and then you try to print out some str01. What's the issue? Uh, object of type bytes is not is not JSON serializable. Wait, really? I thought I thought I've done this before. Um, hold on, I'm missing something here. Also, what is this printing out? Oh, I didn't realize that each time it was printing this thing out at the end. Okay. Um, okay. Let's try this. Okay, fine. Whatever. So, um, some list. How is bytes not serializable? That doesn't make sense. Let's say uh, some dictionary equals, um, I don't know, A5, B10. Okay. There was a situation where I had to convert the thing to a bytes like object. And I'm trying to remember what exactly that was. What was the situation where I had to use bytes to convert this data? Dumps takes any any object basically. Oh, is it is it loads that? Okay, is it loads that uh, takes a bytes like object? It takes a bytes like object, a string, or a byte array. Man, I'm confused. There was an issue. Oh, I think the issue. No, I don't think that was the issue. What was the issue? Hold on. Uh, some class 01. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Okay, so then we create a new variable of some... Okay. Equals some class. All right. And then we do... Uh, sco1.a equals 5, uh, dot b equals 20. Okay, and then we do this, but we have to do this. Right, that does it as well. In what scenario did I need to use a bytes? Uh, did I need to use the bytes uh, method? Because this gives you a byte array of whatever you know, whatever you give it. So, for example, I it I could do bytes ten, and it'll give me. Oh, that's not a good example because it gave me ten. It gave me an uh, an an array of ten bytes initialized to zero. Um, let's do A B C. And then we have to give it an encoding. So this is going to be a bytes-like object. Man, I'm confused here. Oh. Was it? Wait, what if I did list? Oh, okay, so that's that's what it was. Uh creating a list out of the bytes like object. And then you get you get that. I had to do this in some scenario. Was it specifically so I could print out the values? Was was that where I had to use bytes? I'm really trying to remember what scenario that was JSON related was where I had to use bytes. 
because I really had to use it. But was it for just visualizing the data or for, okay, you know what? It doesn't matter. What was I trying to do? Why was I doing this whole JSON thing? I forgot about that. Fuck. Okay. I don't, I don't remember. Oh yeah. It's cause I was trying to show you guys that, uh, the JSON data, if I was uh, serializing a list into JSON, it would give me at the very least those two square brackets, 